Good morning, everyone. I am going to start, uh, this is the first day in a series of Live at Five. I'm going to go live for five days in a row. Why live? Because uh, when I'm live, it really makes sure that I'm present in the moment. This is going to be the video, whether you're watching live or whether you watch it after the fact. Not edited. Pure me. Um, talking freely, hopefully. <laughs> so whatever mistakes I make are going to be captured, and I think that's good. I want to be authentic. And the reason I'm doing five is, one, because it rhymes with life, and also it's a nice small chunk. I wanted to set a goal that I knew that I was going to be able to accomplish with everything else going on uh, that I would stick to you and see through. If I go continue it afterwards, great, but for now I'm going to definitely say that I'm going to go live for five days. Uh, I want to start by saying a super thank you to everybody that reached out to wish me happy birthday yesterday. I made a goal that I was going to individually respond to each person, which in the past I haven't always been able to do because the, the wishes, uh, because I'm so blessed at coming in so rapidly that I can't always keep up with it or I miss some. Um, I hope that I caught everybody on the different social media platforms and the text. If I didn't, I super apologize. I really tried to. I know that sometimes people would respond happy, happy birthday as a comment in response to somebody else's post. So if I missed you, I don't want you to think that your greeting was any less truly, truly appreciated. Uh, it, it meant the world to me. And um, it, it is one of the things that I look forward to on, on my birthday is hearing from all these different people, many aspects of my life saying happy birthday. So uh, because yesterday was my birthday, that was absolutely an impetus for me kicking off these go lives because I was thinking that uh, what is something that I can do to kind of communicate to everybody in a different way than I have been some of my posts and videos and things like that to really talk about uh, where I'm at right now and what I'm working through. So whether you're new to getting to know me or whether you've known me for a while, um, you'll see a lot of my posts being about growth and change and uh, being a growth and change catalyst, really trying to coach people through growth and change. And on occasion, people will ask me to, to explain a little bit more about what they mean or I'll get the, the question why. And uh, honestly, even for myself, working on revising my site, working on how I'm going to reach out to people and, and offer different things that I could do, I need to hone in on that why and I need to make that something that's really understandable. So for me, it's been thinking about, let me really dig down into something that's simple and straightforward without going into kind of a whole life story of how change and growth have impacted me and, and why it matters. Uh, you know, I think a lot of times when we think about growth and change, we think about it being this gigantic big task, right? We think it's a 180 degree or maybe just a 90 degree turn, but it's, it's, a, it's a big pivot to get from where we are to where we want to be, whether that's something that we're choosing to do or that's something that's been thrust upon us. And honestly, growth and change can be very tiny steps. And often those tiny steps are even better at accomplishing big long-term goals because they're incremental. So we make, you know, let's say we're going to get up five minutes earlier. We're going to drink one more glass of water. But if you set, say, maybe one week or one month uh, standards and you do that same tiny increment again, at the end, right, you have this, this big change. But the reality is, even with those incremental small changes, they can feel gigantic given the current situation that you're in, right? For whatever reason, that small change, maybe it's the one glass of water, right? Maybe you're already really busy throughout the day and even getting the chance to drink whatever amount of water you're drinking is really difficult. How are you gonna add in that one more glass, right? And obviously I'm, I'm simplifying with that example. A lot of what we're facing are much different than just trying to add an additional glass of water a day. Though I will note, um, and my husband would be very happy to hear me say this, hydration is important. So that one extra glass of water a day can make a really big difference. So what do we do when we get those changes? Whether again, they're big changes or they're little changes, right? Whether we've chosen we want to change or whether it's a change that has been thrust upon us and we now have to kind of figure out, okay, what, what am I going to do with these new circumstances? And I think it goes back to really, you think about when you were, uh, and, and this, this applies across the board, when you were in school, whether you were going to be doing, um, learning something new, writing an essay, drawing a piece of artwork, right? It starts with the idea. We don't all of a sudden create this massive completed piece. We start with, with kind of sketching it out. And if you look at the great artists and the great authors, the great, great architects, right? They start with a plan. And that plan doesn't have to be the entire A to Z, 
when you get going. So in that moment, maybe you've experienced an unexpected loss in an area of your life and, and loss is a wide spectrum. That can be the loss of a loved one. It can be a change in relationship status. It can be a change in career. And when you're facing that change, you don't know what the next day is going to look like the next week, the next month. And probably prior to that, you at least had some idea of what your expectation for how things were going to flow. So now you have to kind of figure out, okay, this was what I thought was going to be. Now this changes here. So that means difference. And you haven't yet really gotten to, to get into that rhythm. So I'm a big proponent of uh, Excel spreadsheets, but I'm actually going to say, let's not do the Excel spreadsheet. Let's do good old fashioned pen and paper, right? And you start with day one, minute one, if you need to, right? Where right now, what do I need to do? So this here's this change that has occurred. What is the first thing that I need to do? And it may be the first thing you need to do is just sit for 15 minutes and take a lot of deep breaths and kind of work through it, right? What is the next step? Is it something that you need to do with a financial shift that you need to change? Is it going to be now uh, your day is going to be organized differently and you need to figure out how you're going to fit the different chunks of things that you absolutely have to accomplish in? Uh, if it's as health related, is it mean that you are going to have a medical appointment or perhaps shifts in what nutrition you take in or how, how much you physically are active, right? But putting those steps down, again, just general, Don't you don't need to start getting into the whole like how what that's going to look like. I'm going to put my sneakers on and run for 30 minutes. It's just general, right? What are the things that you know that you need to do? Some of those may already have been told to you by the change itself, right? Whether it's a, it's a career change, perhaps the circumstances are okay. You now know you're going to be working such and such less hours or more hours. So you, you start to create that very basic plan. And the reason that that plan is important is because now you're owning it. So ra rather than looking at it as this circumstance that has been thrust upon you, or again, perhaps the change, and it feels like this is really big, it's not going to make that bigness go away. But it gives you some ability to have some control and have some focus. Reach out to people around you who may have encountered similar circumstances. Get information from them if that's helpful. Maybe it's not. Maybe for you, the best way that you process things is, is kind of just holding on to it for a little while yourself. That's okay. I don't think there's any one size process for that initial phase of thinking about what you're going to do. And this is the same thing that I talk about when I go into organizations. If it's something that, you know, you're trying to implement new software and, and it's not going well and you need to figure out what has to happen. If it's uh, the culture seems really not quite right and you're not sure where the issue is. It all is going to start with that same basic step of understanding what are some of the things that you know need to happen, those incremental changes that are ultimately going to lead to the big change. So I encourage you, if you're at a place in your life right now where you know there's something you want to do differently, or something has happened and you know it's going to be different, whether you want it to be or not, first off, my blessings are with you. I am praying that you're able to maneuver through whatever is before you. I am confident that you will be able to. Uh, get a piece of paper, get a pen, and uh, take some moments to just kind of jot down some plans. If you would like any feedback or you're looking for support or encouragement, I'm here. Feel free to message me. Absolutely. And uh, I hope that you have a great rest of the day, an amazing weekend, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.